Good afternoon and welcome to the Mariah Systems webinar. Uh, my name is Beatrice Heiner. I'm a sales executive here at Mariah Systems. And today we're going to be talking about intelligent data capture and uh, for accounts payable. So um, today we're going to be doing some introductions. We're going to talk a little bit about Mariah and um, IBM DataCap, go through the value of intelligent capture, give you some customer examples, and talk about uh, the DataCap return on investment. Sean Scott's going to do a DataCap demonstration for you. Then we're going to go into some next steps and have a uh, short Q&A afterwards. So again, my name is Beatrice Heiner. I'm a sales executive here at Mariah Systems. And I have Sean Patrick Scott with me. Sean is our DataCap technical consultant, and he's a DataCap expert um, uh, in the field. And uh, we'll be able to show you the demo of uh, Accounts Payable. So a little bit about Mariah Systems. Mariah Systems has been an IBM premier partner for 15 years. And uh, we have been a data cap partner for six years. So Mariah has been a data cap partner um, prior to the acquisition of uh, data cap by IBM. So some of the industries that we work with are manufacturing, banking, insurance, energy, and government. We, if you'd like more information on Mariah Systems, please visit us at mariahsystems.com. A little bit about DataCap. So again, IBM acquired DataCap in August of 2010, and Mariah Systems was a pri uh, partner prior to that acquisition. So IBM made a strategic decision here to purchase DataCap to strengthen its leadership position within the ECM space. And now, with the release of version 8, IBM has totally integrated DataCap into its suite of products. As you can see, DataCap is utilized in a wide variety of industries, and many of these are the same industries that uh, Mariah has expertise in. Just hit the side. The DataCap Taskmaster 8.0 provides functionality that includes departmental, branch, and network web-based functionality. Now, it has extensive reporting capabilities. This is great for management because it allows a manager to see how many documents or batches someone has processed. One of the main uh, differences between DataCap and its competitors is the user-based pricing. Um, this is not a per-image or per-click model. Again, it is a user-based model. So this has the same robust configurable solutions as 7, and uh, DataCap is easily configured to do some, um, so some of the burden of IT is removed. Now, it's available on a thin and thick client, and the thin client is a web-based application that's easily deployed and is truly scalable enterprise-wide, where a document from anywhere in the world can be scanned, verified, and then stored in a content repository or any back -end, other back-end solution that you may have. So here we talk a little bit about um, enterprise capture. So here you can see the diagram, and it allows you to input um, from multiple sources. So, you know, the mailroom, your department, branch, field, whatever. Um, and it accommodates paper, fax, um, any types of documents. It offers many recognition methods, so, you know, automated ID, validations, and productivity features. After handling all the variability of document input and assuring accurate data extraction, it delivers data and documents to all other systems that power your enterprise. Rule Runner Service empowers customers to orchestrate and capture processes, uh, pick and or choose OCR engines, lookups, releases, all without any programming. Here we have a picture of um, what the capture process looks like. 
we're taking documents that have been faxed, mailed, or emailed, again, and we are scanning them in or inputting them into the system for your capture, so your OCR, ICR, OMR, barcode recognition, as well as verification and processing. Now, at this point, the, um, the document is also being de-skewed and cleaned up for easier viewing. The information is extracted and or the document can then be stored in a variety of systems, including FileNet, where then it is easily retrieved. Now let's talk more specifically here about data cap accounts payable. It's utilized by organizations to help reduce or eliminate data entry and automatically calculate both line items as well as total math calculations. Taskmaster AP can work with ERP systems like SAP to do data lookup and auto-populate vendor name, address, purchase order number, and data types. Only exceptions to this process are sent to the operator for review. The operator will then verify the information and make any changes needed and then uh, process the batch. Any exceptions are rerouted to management for review and change. Taskmaster AP has reporting capability at the management level so that there's a clear picture of where all invoices are within the process as well as monitoring the output from each operator. Here we'd like to talk a little bit about achieving your return on investment objectives. So you look at this and you ask, so how do organizations get their return on investment and how does my organization do that specifically? Well, within Intelligent Capture, you will reduce the cost um, by being able to scan remotely and reduce or eliminate the need to ship documents overnight or express them. Um, you can reduce labor costs by eliminating manual data entry and cost of document capture. And now only exceptions are being handled instead of each line item or piece of data. We have different cases, and in the case of like a medical claims, um, there are now no errors on social security numbers and patient IDs, so now you are more compliant. There's also saving and scanning when it takes much less time to get documents into the system. So many companies no longer have a need for barcodes scanned um, in between different documents. Um, and they do not to be they don't need to be prepped, so that saves timing uh, time there as well. And we can save organizations up to fifty percent on their cost of capture. So you also now have the ability to standardize on one vendor, allowing you to reduce uh, license fees, maintenance costs, and um, it also allows for additional volume based pricing. So from here, we're going to go into the data cap demonstration. And uh, Sean Scott is going to give you a demo on uh, data cap accounts payable. So here I'm going to turn it over to Sean. Thank you very much, Beatrice. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Sean Patrick Stott. Scott. I'm a data cap technical specialist here at Mariah Systems. What I'd like to show you today is how we're able to scan in various type of invoices from different vendors and automatically extract all the data from the invoice including header information and all of the line item information without really entering any any data by an end user. Along with that I'll show you how we do data validation and data lookup in the system to verify that the data that we're reading by our OCR engine is 100% correct and accurate. So I'm going to go ahead and scan in these sample invoices and you'll see how we're able to go ahead and process those automatically. So I'm going to go ahead and log into the data cap system and this is what you see when you first log into data cap. This is what we call the taskmaster client. You can see the client application is broken up into two windows. One is the operations window and the other is the job monitor. The job monitor shows you all of the document batches that are in process, where they are in that process, as well as some statistical information as like how long that batch has been in that step and how long has it's been processed and who processed it. 
The other window, the operations window, shows you the functions that are available in Taskmaster to, the, to that user. Um, because I'm logged in as administrator, you can see all of the operations, but typically a scan operator may only just see the scan icon, as well as um, the data verifiers that review the OCR information to, uh, make, to ensure its accuracy will most likely only see the verify application. The rest of these applications are really background automated processes that we use to uh, do things like Beatrice had mentioned, image enhancement, as well as some uh, data validation, field validation, so on and so forth. So a typical user would not see this process. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is scan in those invoices that I showed you. And it now just ingested those. And now it's part of the background process. Now the background process includes quite a few things. Uh, first of all, we OCR the document. So we capture all of the data that is uh, printed on the invoice. And prior to that, we actually do image enhancement. And that is to increase our recognition rate. So if the document happened to be scanned in crooked, we'll automatically de-skew it and straighten it out so that we're able to, again, increase that recognition rate. We'll do things like despeckle so that if there's background noises or little dots on the invoice, we'll go ahead and remove those, again, to increase recognition. We also do line removal because many invoices have lines and grids uh, along with the data, directly next to the data. We automatically remove those lines. Again, that is to increase the recognition rate. We'll also take information that we captured and do database lookups. For instance, we'll capture vendor information and look up in our vendor master table to validate what we've read by the OCR is actually correct. And again, we can put in some business logic along there to fit almost any type of business process. So let me go ahead and display what the background processes have done and what data it has captured. Now for this uh, invoice, you can see this is the verification screen. On the right hand side, we have what we call the image viewer. It's showing and displaying the invoice that we scanned in. On the left hand side is our data entry area. This is delivering all the information we captured in the background process to the end user. Now in most cases, if everything was read with 100% accuracy, this invoice would never go to an end user. But what I'm doing today is displaying this to you so you could see all of the information that we captured as part of this process. So let me describe the user interface so you have an understanding of how it works. The, the teal color fields you see here are our data entry fields. Now this information was captured as part of the OCR process and pre-populated. So we know for this type of vendor where the vendor name is located and we're able to pull that information automatically. Now the end user has the ability to modify any of this information if they wanted to. If I wanted to change this information, I could. But in most cases, when it's a teal color, that means we've read this information with 100% accuracy. If we did not read it with 100% accuracy, we'll highlight it in yellow to the end user. And you can see down here, this information is highlighted in yellow, saying that we read it below that 100% confidence level. So that gives you an idea what that user interface for data entry look, looks like. Along with the data entry, and you can see in remittance zip code here, just above the data entry area, you'll see a, a little image here. That is what we call a snippet. And that's essentially a cut and paste off of the image itself of where that information was captured. So when I click on the remittance zip code, you can see in the image viewer where that information was captured. And what we do is we store that information so that the next time this vendor comes in, we'll automatically extract all of these fields, including remittance zip code. So if I click on the invoice date, you could see in the image viewer, the invoice date is highlighted, invoice number, so on and so forth. So what that has the ability to do is the end user can actually tell where all that information is to the system and be able to uh, what we call store a fingerprint. So for instance, this PO number, if I, if I wanted to change the location of that, let's say the vendor had changed its location, 
I can just simply use a tool that we call click and key. Now click and key allows you to click on the image viewer and I'll do that right now and you'll see it automatically extracted that information, OCR'd it, and changed the snippet to the order number. And that, that's an end user function. I'm going to go ahead and actually click on the PO number again and you see it automatically just extracted that information. I didn't have to key that information in. I just simply clicked on the image viewer. Now the system knows exactly where that PO number field is located so that the next time the invoice comes in it'll automatically be processed. So I didn't need an IT resource to configure any zone information for this invoice. The end user simply just clicked on the fields and recorded where that information is. And I'll show that in more detail on the last invoice that we process. In this case, we've seen Stinger Wellhead Protection Vendor before, so the system knew exactly where all that information is. It read it with 100% accuracy. Now, we also do field validation. If any of these fields were incorrect or invalid, we would highlight them in red. But it did read everything with 100% accuracy for this invoice, and it is OK to process. Um, we also do line item information. If you could see here, I'm going to click on the first line item. You see that is now highlighted in yellow for the entire line. And if inside the line item, if I click on a field, that is also highlighted. So that the end user can easily see where all this information is being captured from. Not only in the image viewer, but also in the snippet. So if they needed to verify this information, they, the end user doesn't need to look around. They can quickly and easily see where that information is. We also do uh, some mathematical validations. We actually, for each line item, mu multiply the quantity times the price to make sure it equals the line total that we have. If for some reason this was out of sync, this line item would be highlighted in red and would have to be corrected. So I can go through each of my line items. If you notice in the image viewer, it's highlighting each line. And I can just review that information and see that it is, in fact, accurate. Now, this field came up yellow because the uh, system wasn't certain with 100% accuracy whether it was a 1 or a 7. In this case, it did read it as a 1. It is a 1. It did read it with 100% accuracy. And we validated the data that the quantity times the price equals the line total. So in fact, this is a valid uh, line item. And in most cases, this invoice would be automatically processed by the system and never delivered to an end user. I simply just brought it to our attention for this demonstration so that you could see how the process works. So I'm going to go ahead and process that invoice. And what's going to happen is the data that we extract it is going to be formatted in such a way that we can import that into our ERP system automatically as an invoice transaction. So I just process that invoice without having to key any data. OK, here's another vendor that we have. And it, it is, did not pass field validation for invoice number because we actually have extracted the pound sign there. So I'm just going to take that out, clean that up, and now it's a valid invoice number for our system. So I put business logic in there to say it can only be numeric or a hyphen is allowed. It can't have extra characters. So because we read that field in there, we're delivering it to the end user to verify and clean up that data. We can put business logic in there to automatically extract any of the information that we're not expecting to clean up that data. I was just demonstrating how we do field validation. So this uh, invoice was read with 100% accuracy. Again, here are all the line items. You can see we did read it with 100% accuracy. Not only do we validate each line item, we also validate that the summation of all the line totals equals plus the shipping plus the tax equals the invoice total. If one of these fields happened to be missing, it would be invalid. And this invoice total will be highlighted in red, saying that we're either missing a line item or the tax is missing or the shipping because it does not completely add up. But in this case, everything does add up, and we were able to read it with 100% accuracy. Let me also show you how uh, some of the image enhancement in increases our recognition rate. You can see here, this is what the original invoice looked like. And you can see we have lines and grids around some of the information. 
because we don't want to accidentally read some of that line, uh, line information, we actually remove it behind the scenes and that's what the invoice looks like when we go to do the OCR process. So there is the cleaned up image and here's the original. So let me go ahead and process this invoice. Again, this invoice would have been processed automatically without any human intervention in most cases. I just delivered to you today so that we could demonstrate how the process works. Now this document would be delivered to an end user because it did not pass data validation or field validation. You can see the invoice date field here is now highlighted in red. And what that's telling me is it did not pass validation. And if you can see closely, the invoice date is February 29th, 09. February 29th is a leap day, but 2009 is not a leap year. So it did not pass our date validation. So I'm going to go ahead and correct that. And it now passes validation now that I changed it to a valid leap year. So you can see we could do field validation. We could do data validation. We can make sure all the numbers look up correctly. Um, so there's a multitude of business rules that we can leverage and configure as part of this application fairly quickly and easily. So I'm going to go ahead and process this document. And again, here's just another typical invoice. It, everything is in the teal color, which means we read it with 100% accuracy. All of the information was captured. I'm going to go ahead and process this document. Now the final document that I'd like to show you is a two-page invoice. And it's coming from a vendor that we haven't seen before. So as an end user, I'm going to be able to configure this invoice in such a way that we're going to tell the system exactly where all the fields are located for this invoice, store it in our library, so that the next time that this vendor comes through our system, we'll be able to automatically process it without any human intervention nor any IT intervention. We wouldn't need an IT resource to configure this invoice in the system. So this is what an end user would look like when a new vendor comes in. If you could see, some of the fields are already uh, extracted automatically through the OCR engine. We were able to capture the invoice date, invoice number, and invoice total automatically. And the way we do that is we look for certain key labels. For instance, for invoice number, we might look for invoice pound sign or invoice num or invoice and uh, we look for certain labels and say go to the right of that or go to go below that to capture that information so here before uh, the background process automatically captured all that information for invoice date invoice number invoice total and shipping if you could see the invoice totals highlighted in red and that's because it did not pass our data validation because we are summing all the line totals, which are zero at this point, plus the shipping, plus the tax, and that does not equal up. So there, again, you can see how we're doing the data validation to say that um, that information does not add up correctly. So an end user, when they go to head and process this document, what they're going to do is they're going to click on their remit and zip code. And the system's going to remember exactly where in that image that that information is stored so that the next time it comes in, we'll be able to capture it. And if you notice, all I did was click on the image itself where the zip code's located. I did not key in any information. By me just clicking on that zip code in the image viewer, it automatically OCR'd and extracted that information, as well as recorded the snippet area where that information is being uh, captured. Now, I'm not able to capture the vendor automatically because it's using um, basically a logo. So I have the ability to do database lookup in this application. I want to look up in my vendor master table all of the vendors that begin with S to find this vendor in my vendor master table. So I click the lookup button. It brings back a hit list of two, of two vendors. I'm going to select the correct vendor. Now what that did is it went out to the system from the vendor master table and also pulled the vendor number from the vendor master table. As you're well aware, most vendors will not include your internal vendor number on your invoice. So you usually have to extract that from your vendor master table. We have hooks into the databases to look in the vendor master table directly to pull vendor number. And we use the vendor name and remittance zip code in this example to pull that information. Because we're going to need that vendor number to process this invoice in our ERP system automatically. So now that I have the, the vendor name the vendor number, 
invoice total, invoice amount. I'm going to go ahead and now tell the system where to find the line item information. And I'm going to be able to do that without having to key in any data. I'm going to create a line item. And then I'm going to click on the item ID field. And now for the very first line as a user I'm going to click on the item number, the quantity, the item description, the price, and the line total. Now if you noticed as I clicked on each field on that first line item it populated not only the data entry with the data that's on the invoice and it also captured the snippet area of the coordinates of where we're capturing that information. So now I've just clicked and keyed the first line item and now I'm going to click this button find details. That's going to go out and extract 23 line items on both pages and you see you could see how quickly that went. It went and read the first line and based on the columns of where I clicked it went and returned all 23 line items without me having to enter any data. I just simply clicked on the first line. And if you want to see the details of that information that was extracted over the two pages, you could see here. Here's all the item IDs, here's all the item descriptions, the quantities, the prices, the line totals. So you could see here we automatically extracted all of the information for this invoice without having to key one character of information. It was simply just clicking on the, the different fields and then clicking our Find Details button to find all of that information. Now as, a, as an end user, I'm going to want to tell the system that this is a new vendor and to remember all of that information, where it's stored and how it's processed. So now I'm able to process this invoice automatically and again, I was able to do that without keying any information. And we're now going to extract this entire document and all of its information so that we can go ahead and process this automatically by our system. So that concludes our demonstration. I'd like to turn it back over to Beatrice for the rest of our presentation. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Sean, for that um, demonstration. We appreciate it. What I'd like to do now is talk about next steps and how you can get started with DataCap. So a couple of ways. First is our Quick Start program. The Quick Start program helps you to reduce risks and it uses a rapid approach for implementation. So when we come into an organization, we can help you save time and money. What we do is we leverage pre-configured pre rules for that are available for most clients are applicable for most clients and they can be used really in a variety of ways and in a variety of business applications including accounts payable so when we come in we look at your environment we use lessons learned um, and we come in with a fixed price fixed scope and help you to obtain that uh, rapid return on investment that you're looking for here. We also have something else called the uh, data cap value assessment. This is different than the quick start solution. So the quick start solution is a project methodology or how we do uh, projects. Uh, the data cap value assessment is really when you're at the beginning of um, the search for a intelligent capture solution and we come in here and we help you to um, look at the capture solution what types of results do you want where would you like to use it within your organization how are you going to get your uh, quickest return on investment where's that going to come from what's it going to look like we truly focus on the business requirements here your desired outcome not only for current state and for what you want to do in the next short term but long term so where do you want this to be within your organization and who can use this technology and um, help to um, further the return on investment here so it's usually a two to, week, two to three week 
project. It is fixed price. It is fixed scope. Um, and uh, we've done it for a variety of businesses, variety of um, applications. What I'd like to do next, now that we've talked about that, is go into our uh, Q&A session. Um, here uh, we have a couple of questions in already, but if you have any other questions, um, now's the time to um, go ahead and uh, send them over to me. So uh, with that, we're going to start taking questions here in a moment.